Hi guys, I'm Holly from Vitmill and today we're reviewing the iStick Amnis 2 by eLeaf. It was sent to me by Easy Click for the purposes of our review. If you look down in the description you'll find a direct link to Easy Click and you'll also find a direct link to my written review which is in a lot more detail. Nice and simple to open. That's really small and pretty. With a little bit of tank. And in here, we've got some O-rings, a key of some form, spare coil, bubble glass, which is always nice to see inside your kit, user manual, Use a manual for the tank and for the system. USB C charger. And quite typical of where a lanyard. This is E-Leaf on it. You've also got your warranty card. Let's get on with the specs. So I've got 120 mil by 36 by 19.5 the tanks 20 by 53 including the 510 pin the mod 70 by 30 by 19.5 millimeters it weighs in at 124 grams 0.124 kilo having said that the mod weighs 84 it's rocking a 1100 milliamp hour battery, 1100 watt. The e-liquid capacity is 1.8, but it does come with a bubble glass. But I ain't use a bubble glass. Amateur. It can handle 0.3 to 3 homes. That's homes as in O-H-M, not homes as in I'm going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Power range. Now depending what coil you're using, it's supposed to fire between 12 watt and 23 watt. Or 3.2 volts to 4.6 volts. It's got a battery level indicator. See that? It's indicating the battery. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's about time. It's got USB-C. It's got overcharge protection. Over discharge protection. Over current protection. 10 second cut off protection. Short circuit protection. The tank's got adjustable airflow. It's got variable power. Settings. Let's have a look. Have a quick. See? It's variable. It's available in five different colours. There's a picture somewhere. It might be here. You can change the coil from the bottom and you can fill the liquid from the top. Now, the most important thing. Well, let's get on my opinions. It's rather shiny. Can you see it reflecting? If not, well it is tough. All this is nice and good metal eh? really reflectively. I like that. I like shiny things. But it's also not that much of a fingerprint magnet, so that's good. It's got low, medium, high and max power settings with a bypass mode down there. Where I go. There we go, bypass. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you use a 0.6 coil, it fires in volts. On low, it'll fire at 3.2 volts, which I equate to be about 17 watts. That's fine. Medium, medium is 3.6, which I equate to be about 21.6 watts. High is 4 volts, which I equate to be about 26 watts. Max is 4.6 volts, which I equate to be about 35 watts. Now, 
What's the problem with that, aren't they? Well, high is 26 volt watts and max is 35 watts. But the specs it can only fire up to 23 watts. So what's occurring? It did seem to me like it was firing higher when I went onto them. So maybe it doesn't use ohms low, maybe... I don't know, I don't understand it. It's blowing my mind. For the purpose of covering all the bases, at 1.2 ohms, the mod will fire low at 12 watts, medium at 15, high at 18, and max at 22. 22. And max at 23. 23. The airflow's pretty awesome. You've got fully open. And you take around, you got four holes. I know you can't see them, so I'm not even going to try and show you. But I also like how the coils do it. But no point one two ohm coil has got a smaller inner diameter, so you, it'll get more restrictive airflow regardless of your settings. Um, I think it's good. It can provide quite restrictive, or it can provide quite a good direct to lung vape. I like it. The 1100 milliamp hour battery is pretty darn good, it should last you most of the day, if not all of the day, depending what car you're using and what power setting you're using. Cracking, but it's only got about a 1 amp charge, meaning it takes about an hour and 20 to charge. I think it could do a bit a bit faster, but I don't think 1 hour 20 is all that bad. Are you keeping it up? Good. So, the battery indicator. Green at 100 to 60, 59 to 20 blue, and red is 20% or less. Quite standard, really good groove air. When you're charging, it only does red and then it goes off when it's finished charging. I think that's a bit naff, it could do with an indicator. Even if it's just a 50% indicator, that would be nice. Now that's it, I've had enough of playing nice and nice. Bring the brutal hauling back into the limelight. So, the unboxing's quite different really. There's uh, uh, three different stages. There's the premium or whatever it is. Then there's the starter basic, which I've got. And then there's uh, the child-proof version. Now the thing that get, get gets me about that is why would you make a kit that doesn't lock when you're making a kit that does lock? I don't understand why you do that. I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever. Alright, if the child lock has to have a pin code, then fair enough, that could be annoying. Make a basic version. But it's just a button. So why have you sent me one that doesn't lock? Because I tell you, I've wasted about 500 milliliter of liquid this week by leaking my pocket. No, but seriously guys, that is really annoying. The Another thing annoying about the top is it twists for absolutely no reason that you open it by sliding. But for some reason it twists and does whatever it wants. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand why you design your tank like that. It doesn't make it any nicer to use. In fact, it's really annoying. I don't get it. Why? Please. Why? Tell me. Why? Why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the next thing for coils. See, I started with a 0.6 because that was pre-installed. And I thought it were absolutely naff. I went up the power and like the high power it did alright on. Um, but every, everything below were just r rubbish. So I took it off and used it on my mod to use it a little bit higher power. I think I went up to 40. 40 were alright but it was constantly on the edge of burning. And then I put it on to 45 and that were burning. So I'm not quite sure. But then I put the 1.2 on. Not expecting much better. I thought this is going to be absolutely naff. And the 1.2 provided great flavour throughout. I mean, don't get me wrong, on the uh, lower setting they weren't much to brag about, but throughout the rest of the settings, the 1.2 ohm coil kicked rear end majorly. Majorly. So with that in mind, I thought, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't got much up, but we'll put 70 30 liquid in. See how that handles it. It'll burn me coil that, but at least we've tried it. And oh my god, best thing I've ever done. It and both coils, both of them, even the 1.2 and the 70 30, like a dream. The flavour was here, everything else was here, it was shit off. I really, really, really liked it. There you go, guys, sorry. <coughs> I'll calm down a little bit now. So there you go, guys. Uh, on the Easy Click review, I did say that. It's a great device, great potential, but the fact that the top don't lock on the basic version really annoys me. It did leak in my pocket several times. Uh, there is something else I must have mentioned while I'm being a bit brutal. When I first got the coil the kit, set it up, happy days. On my own, I forgot to put it, uh, turn it off, so I put it in my pocket and it burnt out. Bad times, my fault. So, when I got back to the shop the next day, I put the other coil in, and put the other coil in. Filled it up, left it for 10-15 minutes, and it was dry burning. Um, but I'd washed the tank out, so there was absolutely no burnt liquid flavour in there, if you know what I mean. 
but for some reason that second coil tends to burn. But the manual does expressively say to put some liquid inside the coil before you try it. So I would always recommend doing that guys. I did buy some more coils and tried them and that's what I based my review on, on the second lot of coils. Um, but it's worth mentioning because if other people have this problem, then it's a problem. I generally don't think it were. I think you either my fault or it was just a duff coil. Which is fair, um, it does happen, everyone makes a duff coil. I mean everything I do is duff so I can't say all. But back to the basic, like I said, it's a great kit with great potential. There's just some downsides like the top cap and the 0.6 coil should and could be better. Shempop. Right, Nadine Long. Thy owns a Proton Express Mini Kit. Congratulations. We'll talk about postage and I'll post it out to you. You've got to pay though. That's how this works. Anybody that wants the Anise 2 kit, all you've got to do is make sure you subscribe and comment down below. But I'd also be very grateful for you if you subscribe and ring the bell, regardless whether you want the NSK, and it'd also be nice for you to comment and let me know what you think. Um, but that's it guys, I'm moving on. Um, there is also one more thing I'd like to mention. From all the devices in the past that haven't been claimed, they are now up for a charity raffle. Um, I've divided them all into three boxes, and they're all worth about £100 each, it's £310 giveaway, there's some tops in there as well. But the majority of the things are devices that I've used for a week for the reviews and now they're waiting for someone to win them. So, the, visit the description down below. The money goes to, I think it's Rainbow, a uh, children's charity, um, children with serious illnesses. Um, make sure you visit that link and make a donation. You have to donate £5 in order to be in for the raffle, but if you've got a pound to donate, that'd be great. Thank you very much, Lee. Right guys, I'm going to edit this video and upload it to you. Next week I'll be back with the BSKR by Vandy Vape. Um, until then, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, comment, share, all that malarkey. But the most important thing that I can do is stay cloudy.